Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 29th June 2019. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. Before we begin, let us go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, in today's topics, we will review oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. In general, when swing trading stocks, we like to align them with the direction of the market. We'll study market strength using NASDAQ and NYSE market breadth and technical charts of the market ETFs. In addition to aligning the trades with the market's direction, we like to align them with industry strength. We'll study that using scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum. You may also access the forum from our homepage. It is open to the public. And we'll try to identify potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop template and daily hop on or entry template. Together we call this at a glance template because this template helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds using unambiguous trade checklists. In the weekly chart, price came to a long term memory resistance line and pulled back from there. The weekly backdrop candle color remained bullish cyan However, the candle shape is indecisive. In the daily also, price came to the memory resistance line and pulled back from there. If you followed me on the Twitter channel, you would know that I hinted at a possible long trade in USO on this day. And as price went up, came to the memory resistance, I suggested closing the long position. Both the decisions were very timely. If you didn't exit the trade when price hit the memory resistance in the daily, you had to give up some of the profit as it fell down on Friday. This is a case where using the memory resistance line, you would book profit in existing long position However, you wouldn't take any short trade because there was no short trade setup in US oil at that time. As of Friday's market close also, there is no trade setup in US oil. Gold ETF GLD The weekly ended with an indecisive shape candle the candle color is bullish because it ended with a long upper tail you may not immediately take any long trade in gold in the daily chart price went up sharply far above the upper boundary level it is overbought Price came down little bit 
on Wednesday and Thursday and then went up again on Friday. Because it is overbought and far above the upper boundary level, you may not take any long trade in gold and it is very bullish so there is no short trade setup. From commodities analysis we move on to market breadth analysis. We are looking at the NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index both using weekly charts along with three pairs of internals, new high low, advanced decline and up down volume. Both NASDAQ and NYSE ended with bullish shape candle and the candle colors are also bullish. The market internals are also bullish. All the six internals closed above zero and they went up from the previous week. In every respect, the market breadth is bullish. The market breadth was bullish. What about the market ETFs? This is S&P 500 ETF SPY using weekly daily at a glance chart template. The weekly candle shape and color both are bullish. It is remaining very close to the watermark resistance level, very close to all time high as well. In the daily chart, it pulled back slightly after displaying the bull release signal. That was the time when I mentioned about a possible pullback because price was at double top. There was a likelihood that price could pull back a little bit. That pullback happened this week and then in the last two days, it started to go up again. During this weekend, the presidents of China and the USA met together and they decided not to escalate the trade tensions, at least for the time being. It is likely that next week, because of that news, price will open higher, probably above the watermark resistance level and it will create a new all-time high. Not certain, but it is very probable. At that time, we are likely to have a bullish cyan color candle in the daily chart. The weekly is already bullish. Weekly and daily, both will be bullish if that happens. However, you may not take a long trade because by that time, price will be above the upper boundary level that is too extended for us to take any long trade. You will see a similar picture in case of QQQ and DIA as well. Let's have a look at them. NASDAQ ETF QQQ. The weekly has somewhat mixed shape. It has a lower tail at the same time, the body is solid. However, the color is bullish cyan. In the daily chart, it pulled back little bit and then recovered again on Thursday and Friday. If there is a gap up open on Monday, this is also likely to give a cyan color candle in the daily chart, bullish candle. However, by that time, price will be above the upper boundary level. That is too extended for us to take any long trade. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, DIA. A very similar picture like QQQ and SPY. The weekly candle shape is indecisive. The color is bullish. In the daily, price recovered somewhat on Thursday and Friday. It is very close to the upper boundary level. One thing you might have noticed for all these three ETFs, SPY, QQQ and also DIA, 
this week's volume was low. Daya is underperforming the market. QQQ is also underperforming SPY right now. What about Russell 2000 ETF? IWM? Russell 2000 ETF, IWM. And here we have a different chart. To start with, in the weekly, not only the color is bullish, but the shape is also clearly bullish with long lower tail as well as a hollow body. This is the only market ETF that went up with high volume in the weekly chart. Earlier, Russell 2000 was underperforming the market. However, this week it started to outperform the relative performance tilted up both in the weekly chart as well as in the daily chart. It was and is still inside a triangle pattern formed by resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom. Usually you wouldn't take any trade unless IWM can go out of the triangle pattern. Because of the trade related news, it is likely that IWM will open with a gap up and from there if it continues to go up, you may take a long trade using the Q gap day trade setup. At the moment, IWM, the small caps are showing better strength than S&P 500, NASDAQ and Dow Jones Industrial Average. Therefore, it may be easier to take profitable trades in small caps if the market goes up next week. Market breadth was bullish. Market ETFs were also bullish. What about the sector strength? This is one month sector performance graph. The red bar represents performance of the current week. Green bar performance of the previous week and the blue bar performance of two weeks before that. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up. Any bar coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. Most of the bars for all the colors are to the right of the zero line showing overall strength of the market sectors. Specifically for the current week, four sectors went down, seven sectors went up. And the sectors that went up, they went up with much bigger percentages. This shows a bullish picture at the sector level as well. Out of the four sectors that went down, three are in defensive areas. These are consumer staples, utilities and real estate. That also shows that risk takers are putting money into the market. If you remember last week's market roundup, in that video, I had cautioned against existing long positions in real estate sector. That caution was based on deceleration of the sector. That deceleration indeed resulted in weak performance in the current week. Real estate ended up being the worst performing sector of the week. This one second shows that using the acceleration deceleration, you are often able to anticipate the market's move and take trades accordingly. Another view at the sectors using scorecard and heat map. The 5 day, 10 day periods and the monthly periods, month 1 to month 12. They show the sector's strength changing over time. Cyan indicates relative strength, 
magenta indicates relative weakness. From the current week, we can see materials and industrials are the strongest sectors. If you are looking for buy setups, you may look for them in these two sectors. And the weakest sectors are utilities and real estate. Once again, you may remember that in the last market roundup, I suggested caution in real estate sector stocks. That was very timely because this week real estate weakened and became the worst performer. Using the five day strength or weakness, you may decide where to look for buy setups, where to look for short setups. Another way is to use the pace column which shows acceleration and deceleration. Industrials is the most accelerating sector now. You may look for buy setups in that, or you could look for short setups using deceleration in healthcare and communication services. These are the conclusions you can make from the sector level analysis. However, like the market level, sector level is also quite broad. To make more accurate trading decisions, you may drill down into the industry level and buy into strong or accelerating industries and short into weak or decelerating industries. Industry scorecard and heat map. This week's strongest industries are shown by cyan colored under 5 days column. If we look at the 10 best performing industries, you will find several of them are in industrials. That is expected because industrials as a sector is one of the best performing sectors and it is also the most accelerating sector. You may look for buy setups in these industries from industrial sector. Let's drill down into the underlying stocks. There are multiple stocks and from the stock scorecard, you may proceed in different ways depending on your trading style and temperament. If you are value stock buyers, that is you buy undervalued stocks, you may use the smart filter to look for only the value stocks in these industrials industries. If you want more stringent criteria in terms of valuation, you may look for stocks that are having cyan color scores under both valuation column as well as secondary valuation column. On the other hand, if you are interested in buying stocks that are showing earnings growth, you may focus only on the stocks that are showing earnings growth in the latest quarter. If you want more strict condition, you may also look for stocks that are showing earnings growth in the last year as well. You may use the other columns to add more and more stringent criteria. These three stocks, for example, have robust earnings growth in all the past three years as well as past three quarters. And one of them, MTZ, is undervalued as well. You may look for a buy setup in MTZ. It is undervalued. It has earnings growth, very robust earnings growth. And the 52-week high column shows it is very close to the 52-week high. That means if you are buying MTC, you have to be comfortable buying stocks that are at or near 52-week high. In these ways, you may pinpoint the stocks that meet your temperament and trading style and then wait for a technical trade setup on that stock. 
let's have a look at MTC Q charts. MTC using weekly daily Q at a glance template. The weekly ended with a very bullish shape and bullish color. It is supported by memory trend line support. However, there is a memory resistance nearby. In the daily, price broke out of this memory resistance. It was inside a triangle pattern in the daily chart as well. It broke out strongly on Friday. Friday's candle shape is very bullish. Color is also bullish. It broke out with extreme bullish pressure with very high activity. There are several memory resistance lines nearby. You may not take a long position right now. You may wait for price to break out of the two memory resistance lines. However, by the time price breaks out of these two memory resistance lines, price will be overbought. It is already overbought in the daily chart. You may not buy such an extended stock. Instead, the Q technique is to wait for the stock to pull back little bit, preferably to the memory resistance lines extended to the right. And then buy the stock just as it starts to go up again after the pullback. That will give you a low risk entry opportunity in a stock that is fundamentally strong, both in terms of valuation as well as in terms of earnings growth. And the stock is in an industry and sector that are very strong right now. This way you can combine the strengths from sector level, industry level, fundamental level as well as technical level to take very high probability low risk trades. What about shorting opportunities? As the market is strong, market breadth is bullish, market ETFs are bullish, it may be easier to profit from taking long trades. However, if you are inclined to take short trades, you may look for them only in weak industries. These are shown by magenta color under 5 days period. If you look at the 10 worst performing industries, several of them are in real estate. That is expected because real estate is the worst performing sector this week. If you look at these three real estate industries, you will see they used to be stronger earlier. The score was in cyan color and now it has turned magenta weak. You may look for shorting opportunities in these industries. These are the stocks in the worst performing real estate industries. Let's filter for overvalued stocks. We find several of them. The valuation is in magenta color. We may further look for stocks that are having negative earnings growth. We have three such stocks. Well is one of them, WELL. -L. We can look at its technical charts. In the weekly chart, Well has a bearish shape and bearish color candle. It also displayed the bear release signal. The next memory trend line support is quite a distance away. In the daily chart, price has come down little bit and then it recovered slightly on Thursday and Friday. That slight recovery removed the oversold condition. Now, if it continues to go down next week, 
if it gives us a magenta color candle then that may signal a go with flow trend following short setup technical trade setup in a stock that is fundamentally overvalued with negative earnings growth and in an industry that is weak at present that will also be what we call a 360 degrees trade setup those were the regular topics as you can see whatever be the market condition you can find trading opportunities both in the long direction as well as in the short direction but the long trades you will take them in strong industries in stocks with strong fundamentals and in stocks that are giving a low risk buy setup for shorting opportunities you will look for them in weak industries in weak fundamental stocks and stocks that are giving low risk short setup you may find more examples of such high probability low risk trades from our traders forum here i regularly share 360 degree trading opportunities using the live market not looking back on historical charts and i try to align the forces from industry fundamental and technical level I will also analyze more stocks using the live market coming Thursday. You may register for that from the education live class menu. That webinar is open to the public. Before I end, let me summarize. On Friday, the market ended in a bullish fashion. Market breadth was bullish. That is, both NYSE broad market index as well as NASDAQ broad market index ended in a bullish fashion plus the market internals, new high low, advanced decline, up down value. Everything was bullish as of Friday's close. The market ETFs were also bullish, and we saw that Russell 2000 started to outperform the others both on Thursday as well as on Friday. If the market continues to go up next week, the higher profitable trades may come from the small cap stocks. From the sector level, we saw that industrials accelerated and is one of the best performing sectors. Materials is also a strong performing sector this week. You may look for buy setups in those sectors. On the weak side, real estate and utilities are weak. That is expected when the market is going up rapidly, defensive sectors tend to underperform. That is what happened this week. Real estate and utilities lagged. If you are going to look for shorting opportunities, you may look for them in these weak sectors. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.